November 30th marked the beginning of a new era of Iowa State football. Rising star Matt Campbell was introduced in the Bergstrom Football Complex as the Cyclones' new head coach. Cyclones.tv recently sat down with Coach Campbell for an extended interview, so sit back and meet Coach Matt Campbell. Coach, 15 days ago you were introduced as the head football coach at Iowa State. What have you kind of learned about this university and this football program since that time? Well, I, you know, number one, my day one I set pace here is really just trying to find out either what, what was going on here, how do, how do we continue to build this and take the foundation that has been laid here and take it to where we want to take the, the level of this football program. And, you know, for me, it's been a great learning experience, quite honestly. You know, I, I had a chance to meet with everybody that has touched this program, um, that touches the football program, as well as our own players, and really sit back and kind of, number one, get to know our own players here and, and almost re-recruit them a little bit into where we're trying to take our football program. So it's been really great, and I think the thing I've learned is we've got great kids here. Um, I'm really excited to see their passion for being successful, excited to see their want to and, and obviously to know their character a little bit and I've been really impressed with that and I think just a little bit about Iowa State in general is the passion that, that resides here. You know, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, I know I talked about it at the press conference but to have the opportunity to go and you know watch the Iowa State-Iowa game and to be able to, to take part of that and just watch the energy and the you know, both at the men's and women's game, it's been really, it's been really fun to watch and really fun to watch the passion that resides here within our fan base. And, you know, I think that only just gives us great energy and excitement to make those people so proud of what we're, what we're going to accomplish here within our football program. Take me back kind of to your journey. Uh, how did you know that you wanted to be a football coach? What kind of triggered that for you? Yeah, you know, I think obviously, you know, just the, the early part of my childhood growing up with a father that was a head high school football coach, you know, I, I know I said that, that, you know, and it's true, my earliest childhood memories are, are, are on the football field, you know, being, you know, being at two-a-days with my dad, being in the locker room, and those were things that were priceless for me, you know, as I look back on it now. And, and you know, as I grew up, I think the greatest mentors in my life were football coaches. You know, my high school football coach had a profound effect on me and, and the type of person that I became in my life, obviously, um, in college with Coach Karras. And, and so I think as, as I was getting to go into my senior year, you know, I dual majored in history and political science and I you know, could have went a couple different ways with it. But, you know, I, I think my, my, my final deciding factor was as I look back on my life up to that point, the people that had the most profound effect on my life were football coaches. And I, I think as I've gotten into this, it's never been about anything more than having an impact and be able to give back to those young people like so many were able to do in my life. Coach, you, you mentioned that you wanted to meet right away with all the players. Yeah. On the whole, how did those meetings go? You know, I, I think those went really well. I, to me, it was really important to hear their voice and to understand where they were coming from. Um, what have we done well here? What haven't we done well? And, and maybe what do we need to, to change? And, you know, I, I think as you come into this, you, you don't want to have all the answers because you don't have all the answers mm -hmm. from my standpoint. But I think what you want to do is find out maybe a little bit of what has gone on here in the past, what's going on, hear their voice, and, and then be ready to direct them and direct the program as a whole going forward and I, I think you know sometimes you can make maybe knee-jerk reactions when you don't have all the information and so you know my, my biggest thing was getting all the information um, you know getting our young guys to finish academically in the classroom and then obviously take the next three to four weeks as we're in a dead period in recruiting and also a time where we're getting our staff together and, and kind of getting everybody finally set to, to lead that staff in the right direction to lead these young men. You have assembled a pretty good portion of your staff. Yeah. Uh, tell me what, how you think they'll work well together yeah. uh, to make a great team, and then kind of what's next in that regard? Well, you know, I think we're really fortunate. You know, I, I think a lot of the biggest thing that we've done from an assembly of the staff is this staff is, has somehow, some way been together, you know, and I think that's, that's really exciting for me. Um, I think when you go into a situation where it's new and you're building a culture and trying to establish a culture, it's great to have people that are all on the same page. And, you know, I think we're really fortunate to have that right now. And 
Um, obviously, we still got some guys that are back in Toledo right now that are, are helping finish a bowl game and, and finish their preparation. You know, my promise to, to those kids back at Toledo were to, to leave, uh, you know, a foundational piece there to, to make sure we gave them a great opportunity to go win the game. And, you know, now the opportunity to, you know, get them after the bowl game to get here and kind of finish off what we've done as well as add some guys that had been with us at some different places. I, I think I'm really excited about that. And, and I think the best thing we've got are number one, great teachers um, to coaching is teaching. And I think that's really important Two, I think they're relentless recruiters. And I think that's, that's, that's already hopefully shown profit. And I think that's allowed us to really hit the ground running in the recruiting process. And then number three, I think we are, we already know what we're all looking for from you know positionally within the recruiting process because we know each other and we know certainly what we're going to do schematically on the offense and defensive side of the football so I think that's helped us and then the last part about it is they're great mentors to young men and I think those are things that have always been really important when I hire young hire people upon our staff no matter what their role is is how do you relate and how do you mentor the young people within our program because ultimately that's the most important piece of our puzzle. Corn. Here in Iowa, it's everywhere, and it's used for just about everything. It's fuel for your vehicle on the way to the game. It's the corn-fed bacon cheeseburger that's the talk of the tailgate. It's ice cream your kids just can't get enough of. It's that cold soda that tastes even better on game day. Here in Iowa, farmers grow corn so you can enjoy all that comes from it, because corn is everything. Iowa corn. Our state. Our fields. Our corn. You're going to flip for the all-new Hy-Vee Fuel Saver Plus Perks Card. Now, when you get the new Hy-Vee Fuel Saver Plus Perks Card, you get the same big savings on gas, plus perks like special deals on your favorite products, cash prizes, or gift cards, maybe even a new car or an all-expenses-paid trip. And getting your new card is easy. Just pick one up at Hy-Vee, go online to activate it, and start earning your perks. It's that simple. Get your new Hy-Vee Fuel Saver Plus Perks Card today. I think the Iowa Lottery actually putting aside money for veterans and their families is a wonderful idea. It means that they, they really care about us. Something I didn't know is that in the past, the money that went to the Iowa Veterans Trust Fund came only from certain games. The Iowa Lottery asked to change it so that it came from all sources. Play the lottery, support veterans, and uh, have fun while you're at it. It's my pleasure to introduce our new head football coach, Matt Campbell. Jamie Pollard mentioned that he was really looking for a head coaching candidate who had been a head coach sure. before. Um, as someone who rose up through the ranks in coaching, how much did that experience help you of being a head coach, trusting your staff, delegating, and really learning how to kind of be the CEO of the program? Well, I think that's huge, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think that's been part of my learning process. You know, I, obviously we're we're always learning, and we're always growing as coaches, and, and especially in my role as a head football coach. You know, I, I'm not perfect. Um, you know, I'm constantly growing in that and learning in that, and I think that's where I've seen the, my most growth in the four years that I was at Toledo was the ability to number one delegate the ability to understand that CEO type mentality when you really look at the whole picture of your program and so I think to have people that number one you're familiar with but number two you know can do the job and you trust I think that's huge and, and you know we're really fortunate that the loyalty you know that those guys have certainly had to me um, and certainly you know I, hopefully I've been able to show back to them that you know no matter what level no matter what the situation you know we we had a chance to build something really special at toledo and now we have a chance to bring that same culture and that same mentality here to iowa state now you just mentioned recruiting and clearly that's a top priority for you uh, how have you, you and your staff been received uh, with the iowa state message here over the last couple of weeks well you know I, I think we've got such a great message to sell and you know i think that's the one thing my staff and 
you know, and myself, I think are really excited about. And I think that's, we've been able to really hit the ground running with that because we've got a great, we've got great things to sell. We've got a top notch university. Um, we've got great academics and we've got, you know, first class facilities. And, you know, I think sometimes it's just getting that word out and, and getting that message out. And obviously the brand of football that we've played in the past, adding that to, you know, certainly all the great things that surround this university and the program. I think that's been really positive and I think you know we've been able to have a real impact in the recruiting process really from the day we've we've hit the ground here and that's that's been great for us obviously it's about sustaining that and continuing to find those players that fit us you know mm -hmm. and it's not just from an athletic standpoint it's a, it's a it's a character standpoint it's a mentality standpoint and trying to get the right fit for how do you build a football program you know I, I've always said this there's no shortcuts in college football and unfortunately some people there's maybe haven't gone that route but there's no shortcuts to success and you know I, you're not going to see us shortcut it um, we're going to do it the right way we're going to get the right person as well as the right player and you know you never are you 100 percent on that but but you can really work diligently to try to be that and i think that's what we'll try to do throughout this recruiting process recruiting can be really taxing mm -hmm. for a football coach you seem to enjoy it do it first of all do you enjoy it secondly if so what do you enjoy about recruiting well, what I love about it is, is it's like putting a puzzle together in my opinion and it's trying to match the pieces to what you're trying to really build within the program and me as the head coach I think it's, it ultimately falls on, on directly on me in a lot of different ways because these young people that you're about to bring in you're going to have a direct impact on their life for the, for the next four to five years and if it's done right and I've always said this in, in the world of coaching, the coach-player relationship, if done correctly, should last a lifetime. And so as we go out and we embark on this journey with these young people, it's not just about can you play football. I think it's a lot more than that. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that I love. You know, I love that, that part of it. How can we affect this young man? How can we have a positive impact on this young man for the next four to five years? And then also, how does this young man fit into the culture that we're trying to create? What's he bring to the table? And, Obviously, great programs have great player ownership and great player leadership. And does that young man have the qualities that maybe someday he can do those things as we begin to build our program to an elite level? Every program eventually establishes an identity. What, what would you strive for the identity to be for Iowa State football? Well, you know, I think when people come watch us play, the cornerstones are going to be attitude and effort. You know, do our kids play the game the right way? You know, do we play really hard all the time? Um, is our effort consistent? And I, I think those are two things that right now it doesn't take any talent to, to control those things. It, it ha it's a mindset and it's the ability to come every day with a purpose to get better. And, you know, you'll hear me talk about it a lot, but it's a process. And, you know, the process that it takes to reach your full potential on a day in, day out basis. And, and that's hard. It's really hard to do. It's hard to ask young people to do that. And it, shoot, it's hard to ask coaches to do it, you know. So I, I think that's a great challenge. And it's one of those things that, that when people come watch our, us play or you turn the video on or you turn the TV on, you know, I, where we want to get this program is people are saying, man, the, that, that Iowa State team, they play really hard. They play with great attitude, they play with great effort, and they give themselves a chance to win on those two core values each and every Saturday. You'll be competing in a conference with some of the top football programs in the country. Um, and with a round robin schedule, you cannot duck anybody, but you don't strike me as the kind of guy that wants to duck anybody. Just talk about the challenge of going against um, a very powerful Big 12 conference. Yeah, and I think that's why you, it's, it's, as a player, it's why you, you, you wanna, wanna come to a place like Iowa State. Um, as a coach, it's why you wanna come to a place like Iowa State. You wanna throw your hat in the ring with the best of the best. And right now, I think as you look at the Big 12 from top to bottom, you know, I think arguably one of the best conferences in all of football. And you, you have some great programs. You certainly have some programs that over the last five to 10 years have kind of come to, you know, to the top of the hill. And I think that's why you see an opportunity to, at, uh, at a place like Iowa State to say, you know what, we can put ourselves there. Now, it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna take a lot of hard work and it's gonna take a lot of discipline. But at the end of it, it it's, it's the competitiveness that you, you look at and you say, man, what an unbelievable opportunity. Week in and week out, we get a chance to go and take ourselves and put ourselves against the best in the country. The journey promises to be really exciting. 
Uh, what's the first step in the journey? What, what is it that you're asking of your players right now that you want them to do? Well, I, I think two things. Number one is trust. Um, the foundation of any great program has to be built on trust. And, you know, that's, that's trust from player to coach, coach to coach, and obviously player to player. And we've got to find and we've got to build that foundation. And obviously those are things that are built in, in a multitude of different ways. And, you know, right now I, I've asked our kids to finish off academically. Um, they'll go home for, for three or four weeks before we come back here in January and start the spring semester. And, you know, I, I think I've given them a great guideline of what are they going to be looked at? How will they be evaluated? What are we going to ask of them? And I think then that, that trust is, starts to be built, that foundation begins to be built. But I don't know if you can go anywhere until that trust factor truly gets built. And I think that's built on consistency of, of you know, action and consistency of, of discipline that you're able to bring day in and day out. And I, I think that's the one thing I know we'll get from our staff. And it's the one thing that I'm gonna ask of, of, of those young men that enter our football program. And, that's not easy, you know, it's not easy to do that and it's not easy to build that, but it's one thing that'll be demanded, you know, from the day those young men come back in the spring semester and really excited to see where we'll be at by the end of the spring. Leadership, uh, I'm guessing, is very important to you. Uh, before you were introduced, you reached out to several of the players and I know that some of this is going to get sorted out in the spring, but do you feel like you're inheriting some good leaders on this football team? Well, I, I, here's what I, I know. I, I know we've got some really good players in, in the leadership piece. I don't know until you really get to see it in action and to see how it responds to both positive and negative, you know. But I think what we do have here are some really talented players. And every elite program that I've been around, uh, you know, when we played at ultimate high levels for championship football teams, I think one of the things that's always been, been positive is the best players have been some of your best leaders. They've been the guys that have had the ability to show up on a day in, day out basis, um, make t their teammates around them better, and have the ability to hold people accountable. And, and I think the one thing we do have are we have some of those very high end players. And so I'm really anxious to see, you know, what their consistency and what their ability, you know, does that high end player equal high end leader? Um, and if it does, then I think we'll have a chance to have some success. And so those are things that, that obviously I think as this journey begins to unfold, we're going to have a really good understanding of that. But from a character standpoint, I think that's maybe my most impressive um, trait that I've seen from the young people in our program so far is we have great character young men and, and that I've been really appreciative so far in my first three weeks on the job. Keeping the people in this building comfortable is a top priority for us. And MidAmerican Energy can help. 40% of our energy bill was just keeping the lights on. Then we switched to energy efficient lighting and bought new uniforms instead. With new efficient appliances, I'm saving money on my energy and water bills. And the money we save each month moving and drying this grain is easy to handle. Regardless of size, MidAmerican Energy can help improve your business's bottom line. The power is in your hands with MidAmerican Energy. An athletic scholarship extends way beyond athletics. Many of today's athletes would never be able to attend college without an athletic scholarship. Today, one in five student athletes are first generation scholars. Student athletes graduate at a higher rate than the rest of the student bodies, and they graduate with less debt. Athletic scholarships are second only to the GI Bill in providing access to a college education. The Big 12 Conference, making champions for life. I want to go to Iowa State so I can study human diseases and how to make people healthier. Maybe I'll try photojournalism. Whatever my adventure becomes, it sounds awesome. Enjoy your adventure at Iowa State. Visit chooseyouradventure.net. Thinking back to your offenses at Toledo, you were always very balanced. Mm -hmm. um, you ran the ball well, but you also threw it quite a bit too. Is that kind of what you're striving for offensively at Iowa State? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think you know our biggest thing is is creating matchups to give us the opportunity to win games. You know, and and I think that 
you can't be one dimensional today in college football. Um, you just can't. You know, unfortunately, defenses are too good for that to be, to, for that to happen. So, you know, what it then unfolds to is your ability to create matchups within the football game to give yourselves opportunities to be successful. And so, you know, again, I think as I look at our offense and, and see very little, you know, so far, but have been able to study a little bit. I think we're really fortunate to have some some core pieces that are great to work with. You know, obviously their development over the next four to five months will be critical to our success. But I think the ability to have, you know, obviously some some good tailbacks, the obviously to have a quarterback that has proven that he can play in the Big 12, and then you know some receivers that have the ability to to make plays when the ball's in the air. I think those things are great starting points. But you have to use those things to put yourself in an advantage to go be successful. And, and obviously, you know, on the flip side of it, you know, the Big 12 defenses, there's some good defenses out there. And there's, there's people that can, if you are one-dimensional, can certainly give you a headache. So I think our ability to create matchups, to put our kids in the best position to be successful, will be at the forefront of who we are offensively. How about your defensive philosophy? What, what should we expect to see there? Well, I, I think number one is defensive football today is so different than it, it, it is. Um, and I think number one, you have to be multiple as well. I think the ability to just sit in the same front or the same coverage today, offenses are obviously way too good for that to happen, especially in this conference. And so, you know, to be able to be multiple, um, again, to be able to have an understanding of creating teams and, and trying to force teams to be one dimensional at times throughout the football game. And then once you create that one dimensionalism is having the ability to, you know, take your, you know, take your chances to be successful and to either create turnovers. Um, I think you'll see our defense run to the football, will be aggressive at times. But, I, you know, I think situational football on the defensive side is so critical to your success. Third down defense, red zone defense, that ultimately those are defining numbers more so than yardage given up. Um, you know, I think it's all about the ability to win those critical situations. And I think you'll see us, you know, really, really astute to understanding and how to winning those situational football situations. Coach, there's an incredible commitment right now to winning football at Iowa State University. It starts with Dr. Leith and Jamie Pollard. It's evident in the facilities, including the building we're in right now. Would you have taken the position at Iowa State if these things weren't in place? Yeah, you know, I, I'll be really honest with you. I think to me, I, I never thought I was going to leave Toledo. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was really grateful to have the job there. Um, and for it, I always said that if I would ever leave, it would have to be the right situation. And most importantly, the right situation was all about the right people. And honestly, between Jamie and Dr. Leith, yeah, two just, in my opinion, two people that, that get it and get it in terms of not just football, but get it in terms of, you know, what what are we trying to accomplish here as a university? What, what image are we trying to create with the student athlete? And, you know, what are we trying to do to, you know, rally the support and, and the, the true passion that the people of Ames and obviously throughout the state of Iowa have for the, the Iowa State Cyclone you know, athletic department. And so to me, their passion, um, their commitment, and obviously I think their character was certainly a major reason why this was a great fit for me, for my family, and for obviously for our coaching staff. The players in this room uh, haven't experienced a lot of winning at Iowa State. How do you get them to the point where they expect something positive to happen? They expect to go make that yeah. next play. They expect to win football games. Well, again, I think that all goes back to that trust factor and building that foundation around trust. You know, I, I think winning is a direct result of your process and your ability to do your process to the best of your ability. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's as you look back to maybe some of our Toledo teams and, and how we started that, because you know we came in at a very similar level, but we, uh, we started to understand process there, and we started to understand the ability that individually how I come in every day and I'm accountable to myself, to my teammates, and what it takes to, to play to reach my full potential. And as soon as we're able to get the majority of our young people playing to their full potential, then I think ultimately you start to get a belief and, and a confidence, you know, and process equals, you know, process equals preparation, obviously equals, you know, in terms of everything else, expectation. And our expectation is going to be to win, but until you understand preparation and process, it's really hard to get to meet those expectations that we all have for ourselves. 
Last thing for you, Coach. On the day that you were introduced, uh, it was easy to see the, the pride that you took in your family. And you're asking them to take this leap of faith with you and come to Ames and start this new life. How much will you lean on your family uh, to make this Iowa State program really what you've dreamed of it being? Sure. Well, I, I think my, my family has meant the world to me, obviously. And I think the hardest part about transition is the, the, the process of not having your family directly with you. You know, and I, my wife came out last weekend and I, I just, you know, more than anything thanked her because, you know, you have to have a great rock solid foundation around you to be able to come to work every day and to, for you to be able to give 110% to the kids that you deal with on a day in, day out basis. And I, I do, I've got an incredible wife. Um, you know, we've got three great children and a fourth on the way. And, you know, I, I think them being actively involved in our football program, as well as all of our coaches and their wives, you know, I think that's the thing that is really unique and really special about, I think, part of our culture that we'll bring here is our families have always been really involved. I think you'll see our kids running around practice. I think you'll see our wives around the football facility because to me, this is a really hard job no matter how you slice it in terms of being a Division One football coach. Your time is constantly pulled in a million different directions. But if the foundation isn't your family, then it's really hard to ask your kids and your players in your program to trust that you know your core values are in the right place. So, you know, I think that's one thing that you'll see from us is our families will be heavily involved in this entire process. Okay, I lied. I have one more question then. As you describe your family, it sounds like you're also describing your football family, and it's really all kind of falls under one umbrella. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think it, it really does. Again, you know, it, 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 it's kind of that philosophy of it takes a village to raise an entire family, you know, and, you know, we spend so much time, you know, involved and ingrained in, in this entire process of building. And I, I think the thing that I appreciate, I, I've never thought that I had a job. You know, this is, you know, it, it, I love waking up every day. I can't wait to get to work. And, and um, because it's, it's not work to me, it's just part of, you know, it's part of that building process and doing something that, that is special and being a part of a game that to me is one of the great, you know, great life lessons is the game of football and what it teaches and how it impacts young people, not just on the day in, day out basis, but for the rest of their lives. And so, to me, it's still teaching, it's still being involved in all those things, but you're right, the, this entire family process is, is really all-encompassing when you talk about our football program. Coach, thanks for taking some time. Yeah, thank you so much. Go Cyclones.